Okay. Well, we are officially live on social media. Uh, I have special guest Sean Rowan of Artex Laboratories. Uh, today is Wednesday. Um, oh, I got some feedback. Give me one second. Sorry, I don't know if you heard that, Sean, but there was some feedback there. I didn't catch it. Oh, okay. It must be on my end because it was playing on Facebook. They just did some updates. Anyways, today is April 21st, Wednesday. We are Reflection Artists Live number 25. And of course, doing this live, there are always some kinks uh, technical wise. However, uh, we have Sean Rowan with us who has been with Artex Laboratories for 40 years. If some of you don't know, Artex uh, Laboratories is a company that distributes detail and products, accessories, and so forth. They've been around for 79 years. So we're going to dig into that uh, with Sean and his perspective on the company and what he's done to and achieved with them as, um, was it vice president of sales, correct? Yes. Um, so vice president of sales. And then of course, he's going to lead in and uh, tell you some background, um, where he was prior to Artex and everything he's done over the years with Artex. So Sean, Thank you for being on and uh, I'll give the mic to you. Well, Justin, first of all, <clears throat> thank you for having me. Uh, and thank you for everything you're doing for our industry. Uh, it's well noted and uh, well respected. Also, you know, I wanna thank Richard and Julio and Clint from Buff and Shine for putting these programs together to make our industry stronger, make our industry better and for everybody to be able to learn about each other which will also strengthen the industry. Uh, but most of all, the person I thank the most is Fred Goldman and the Goldman family who are the owners of Ardex Laboratories. Uh, we have been a manufacturer here in Philadelphia for 79 years. Uh, started out as a regional manufacturer and then grew into an international manufacturer. Um, it, it, we kind of have two, uh, uh, businesses, if you would, but one business, we do manufacturing for worldwide distributing. And we also have a local uh, distributing uh, business that we distribute in, in the area of Philadelphia, Tampa, and South Florida. But nice. um, myself, uh, I've been with the uh, Goldman family in Ardex for 40 years. Uh, prior to me joining Ardex, uh, I went to uh, vocational school in high school back when you had to keep a B grade average to stay in vo vocational school. Uh, back in the 70s, uh, everybody wanted to learn a trade and, and not so much go to college like it is the opposite today. So to be in a voc vocational education program, you had to maintain a B grade average, which I, I struggled mightily to do, but I did. And uh, I was in the auto body refinishing uh, program, learned how to paint. And when I was doing my apprentice work uh, during school, uh, work study, we called it, I was working in a, in a wholesale operation where they did a lot of wholesaling of automobiles and, uh, and things like that. So we would take vehicles, recondition them and offer them at auction for sale or sell them to a, a retail uh, pre-owned facility where I got my, that's where I got my love of detailing. Um, back then detailing was not even heard of here on the East coast. Um, no, it was it, just cleaning cars at that point. It was cleaning cars. Yeah. And, and the crazy thing, what, what I tell people all the time, you know, artists gets referred to as the company that sells car dealerships or the D de the de dealership company you know well and it's probably because where we cut our teeth um back in the 70s and 80s you didn't have detailing there was no you know i, I went to my five-year high school reunion people say what are you doing for a living i'm saying selling detailing products I'm like huh what's that you know oh, well when you get your car shaped up it, you know cleaned up and oh you, oh you sell car cleaning products yeah okay you know i get it um but then come my 10th uh uh, reunion, everybody knew what detailing was because in, in the later in the eighties, uh, detailing started to make migrate its way East from the West coast. Uh, but when I started in my truck in 19, in 1981, 
Uh, I was uh, one of two trucks that were uh, being being uh, deployed by Ardex. Uh, I was kind of the first guy out there that was cut, going out on a a, 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 a a route that never really knew Ardex or who heard of Ardex, even though it was within 25 miles of the factory. Um, so when I when I went out, we would predominantly sell to car cleaning businesses, car washes that did what they called at the time Simonizing, you know, which was a, was was a, a, a general term for waxing an automobile. Yeah. You know, were you guys generic. were you guys also um, uh, doing dealerships at the time as well? Well, because that's where the car cleaning took place. So. The dealership would would be your volume of your business because you know they would clean more cars at a dealership whether they were shaping them up for the pre-owned lot or getting them ready for new car delivery so naturally that's why we built the business you know predicated upon car dealerships um as we got further along in the 80s detailing morphed from the west coast to the east coast here in Philadelphia, we didn't have our first detail shop until 1987. Wow. And, and it was called Steve's California Detailing. And, and he opened up in a, in a, in a well-to-do neighborhood in Philadelphia. And, and he used to advertise, he would hold a Q-tip on his advertising. And he'd say, you know, we go there, you know, and people, you know, it, it was it was a kick because he would tell you how he would go into the, the air conditioning vents and, you know, drop your, your, your visors and clean over the visors. And, you know, so it was detailing. <clears throat> and, and then even into the late eighties, there were not a whole lot of detail businesses uh, in the Philadelphia market. So again, we spent, you know, most of our time, if not all of our time, concentrating on automobile dealerships car washes, wholesale operations. And we had three major auto auctions within a hundred miles of Philadelphia. One That's of them being, well, one being the big house, Mannheim. Ah. So the Mannheim auto auction. And at the time that was, it was one of not too many auto auctions. So I would go up to the auction every Friday morning with my truck. I'd get up to the auction around five thirty, six o'clock in the morning and I would just have wholesaler after wholesaler after dealer come through my truck and buy you know stuff that they would need for that day, and and I would I would compile a pretty good amount of sales on on a Friday morning just hanging out at the auction. But what it also gave me entree to is knowing a lot of people in the market, relationships, owners, owners of dealerships, recon managers uh wholesale other wholesalers and and i got to know and got friendly with some of the biggest and and if not the biggest bob holland said uh holland said probably sells more wholesale vehicles in the united states than anybody else and you know that that that's where we were going so late 80s um detailing came to philadelphia we started learning more about detailing and we realized that in detailing, we needed a different quality product than we did for car cleaning. Car cleaning was basically, you know, buff it, shine it, wax it, get it on the lot. And, and the nice thing about that as a manufacturer and a distributor, consumption was tremendous. Yes. It, it, you know, a gallon of compound would last a week, if that. You know, because you remember now, we're talking about cars that are 18 feet long. Yeah. Okay. We're not talking about these six, seven, not eight feet cars, that the nine feet cars that are out there today. Yeah. You know, an, autom an automobile consumed a lot of compound, especially, you know, you got to remember, we're talking the 80s. So we're talking about yeah. automobiles from the 70s. Big body, the, just everything about them is big. They don't even make garages for cars like that anymore. Exactly. <laughs> right. Big, big bodies. Uh, the interiors were bigger than some cars are today, you know, and, and they had real carpeting. They didn't have indoor outdoor rugs like they have today. 
No. <laughs> they, they had real thick carpeting. Yep. They had cloth interiors. Vinyl was, was late 79 or, or early, early 80. And that was new then. That was that was a new thing. <laughs> it was a new thing in the 70s when when they introduced vinyl interiors. Um, so so you know, we lived in, in the automobile dealership world. Um, I was taught to learn how the dealership works. Um, I was able to actually, you know, one of the things that that I I I my education only got me through high school what i've learned i've learned on the street and i've learned from research uh from reading reading magazines read i mean every monday morning i get the automotive news and and i read automotive news every monday because we're in the car business you know our ba our company uh, business is based on the car business so in the in the like i said in the late 70s consumption of these products were tremendous because of the size of the vehicles. Yeah, they had white wall tires. Are you old enough to know what a white wall oh, tire yeah. is? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, I Every remember that. had them. Yeah, and my well them. my my mom had was my mom and my grandmother were uh huge into Cadillacs in the I remember in the 80s and there you go. that was uh that was a standard almost to have the big large white walls and she had an old El Dorado and it was uh the car it was the two door one too. So that's what I learned how to drive, actually. There you go. But well, yeah, I've, I'm very familiar with that. White wall tires, uh, vinyl tops, you yeah. know, they, and the vinyl tops got dirty. You know, one of the one of the premier products that Ardex started making back many many years before I got there was a vinyl vinyl top cleaner that was safe on the glass, safe on the paint, you know, but did a good job of cleaning the white vinyl tops, which were a, a bugger to clean. And then Ardex also made a coating dressing for the vinyl top that didn't run. You know, people would use armor all and it would run off all over the body of the car. Oh and gosh, like that. Yeah. Ardex made a product called V top that we used to put on the tops and it would dry. It, it was kind of like a floor wax. So it would dry hard, but it wouldn't flake off. And, and over time, it was a pretty neat product. Wow. Uh, right. So, so in the automobile cleanup, if you will, um, the consumption of the products were tremendous. You, you would use, you know, where you're using four ounces of compound today on a vehicle, you're using eight or 10 ounces, if not 12 ounces on a vehicle back then, um, the compound, depending on the severity of how bad the paint was, the condition. You know, then you had a polish. They were mostly lacquers and and catalyzed enamels yeah which which are very hard so those those paints had to have some severe cutting and then they had to have some high polishing done on them so you would have a a, a large consumption of a polish and then you would need some type of a, a of sealant to put on the finish to to lock down the shine so again getting back i mean dealerships consumed a lot of products when we learned about detailing, um, I hung out at this guy's shop, and and we had another fellow from from over in New Jersey uh, that was that that was working with us who who knew a little bit about detailing, and he hung out at this guy's shop, and we realized now that you know the paints have changed. We're we're we are in the day of two stage paints, the real clear coat, uh, color coat, base coat. And the yep. base coat, color coat, and the, then the clear coats, the two Ks. That stuff was like rock. I mean, it was so hard to polish, so hard to comment. We didn't have products that did it. So we developed a product line that were, uh, uh, I don't want to say um, you needed skill, but it was a whole different atmosphere than the space that we consumed in a car dealership or in a cleanup shop or in a car wash. Yeah, the um, paint, basically the chemistry of the paint went forward. And then all those products that were already developed for the other paint systems kind of fell back. And then it was time to pet, catch up with the new paint systems, basically. You know, what, what, what I, what I saw in, in my career with Lardex um, is amazing. I mean, that's, that's why I'm so thankful for the journey that I've taken and I'm still on it and I love it every day. Um, you know, back in the 80s, 
when when Datsun and and Honda and and Toyota came to America, it forced the American car manufacturer to get their stuff together. You know, they can build them smaller, they can build them cheaper, more efficient. And, and the Americans who, like we were talking earlier, were driving these big sidewalk surfers yeah. are now, you know, going down to the, the smaller, more economical gasoline was going through the roof. Um, you know, so the paint was one of the, the victims of cost cutting. You know, in, instead of doing a quality paint job and spending you know, time at the factory to, to do an enamel or a cattle, I'm sorry, a, a lacquer or a catalyzed enamel, um, they, they were cutting costs. So any way they could save money on the American cars, they were copying the, the Japanese and they were doing these base coat clear coats. And, and the clear coat on top of it was hard as a rock. Um, it was, you know, it, it, it was very hard to compound and very hard to polish. So we had to start looking at, you know, morphing towards those finishes because now in the late eighties, they were starting to show up in the dealership space, trade-ins, you know, the damaged vehicles, um, wholesale, retail, whatever. So now we're, we're, we're working, not only are we working with the detail shops that have come into the area, we're helping the dealerships evolve their departments into uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the paint training. So one of the things that I learned early on in my, my life is, is that, you know, you can sit there and, and back then we didn't have internet or anything like that. You could sit there and read a book or, or you could try your best to learn how to do something. But if I showed you how to do something or somebody showed me how to do it, I was more, I, I comprehended it much better. And I took those, that knowledge and I directed it into our sales. And I said, you know, we, we need to do more training. Um, we, we, hired, we hired a person uh, in the late 90s that was uh, going out and, and his only job at Ardax was to go to the dealerships and detail shops and stuff like that and teach people how to use Ardax products. And, and, you know, if, if we would walk in and we look, look for a problem or help with a problem and it started to grow where, you know, we were doing maybe one or two, and I don't even really refer to it as training. It was just helping, yeah. you know, and making recommendations. And then it kind of started getting really, really, I loved it so much that I ramped it up. I came out of my truck. And I started doing it for Ardex, as well as then, you know, we had three trucks on the road in, in 1990. And I said, you know, this is this thing, we could blow this thing up. And, and I told Fred Goldman, I said, look, we don't need three trucks, we need 30 trucks. You know, this is Philadelphia, it's the four, at the time, the fourth largest market in the United States. Um, I, I, I loved I love doing what I was doing. I mean, I love route sales. I love meeting people. Um, you know, I, I love going in and, and, and stopping at Justin's shop and, you know, finding out what's going on in your world and how your son's doing and what's happening. And, and then 20 minutes later, I'm, see you later, Justin. I go to my next stop, you know. Um, how, many my years wife, did, how many years did you stay on the truck yourself? Uh, well, I, I was out for six and then I, I moved on and then got promoted, I guess, to regional manager. It didn't really have a title. You know, I just, I just told Fred, I said, look, man, we need, you know, there, there's, there's opportunities out there for many trucks. You know, there are so many areas where the city was, was spreading out into the, to the suburbs. The suburbs were yep. moving out. I mean, and the industry you know, was growing. The industry was that. growing. The, you know, the farms were turning into houses. The last crop was growing. It was called a house, you know. Um, so it, it, it was just a no-brainer for us to start putting more trucks on. But what we also did was we started to roll out na internet or nationally our distributor network. So there was a lot of times in the early 90s, I was working seven days a week and didn't complain. 
Uh, I would I would work in Philadelphia with either training a, a new route salesman or doing a a uh, a training or a shadowing at a at a dealership, teaching a, a young fella how to do a better job or how we could help them do a better job. Um, and then on the weekends, Fred and I were leaving at five o'clock on Saturday morning, and we were traveling to different parts of the country for the weekend. And we would we would see, you know, we would see distributors that were selling our products and and work with them. And I would be doing the demonstrations of the Ardex products. And and like I said, for many years, um, seven days a week was not unusual my blessing was my wife was also working uh, in Chicago. So she was tra traveling Monday through Friday. So, you know, it was kind of cool that we so both had both career. ways. Yeah, we both had our careers. So, you know, it, we, we knew what we wanted to do in life. We were unable to have children. My wife, my, my wife was, was ill young at a young age and uh, we were unable to have children. So, you know, we kind of like focused on our career. Now, what I do today, what I did then, I love it. I mean, I love everything about this industry. And, um, you know, it's kind of cool because back in the er early 90s, when we were, you know, doing this training kind of thing, um, I got involved with, with a, a gentleman from AutoWax. Uh, and and he, he, became, he came to work for us for a short time, Alan Reed. Who, who was a very respected employee at, at AutoWax. And he did a phenomenal job blowing up AutoWax and, and making them the powerhouse that they became many years ago. Uh, he came to work for Ardex after his tenure at AutoWax. And he got me involved with the PDA, the Professional Detailers Association. I don't know if that rings a bell to you, but yes. that, that the, was- The, 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 the association nice. prior to the IDA. Correct. And I put my heart and soul into that. I met great people like Bud Abrams, a tremendous man, uh, Karen Duncan, uh, even some people that are that are involved with the Greg Swit, who is who's involved with the IDA. He was one of the guys that I would meet with back in the early 90s to form the PDA. And and I, I'm a true believer in an association and I would spend my personal money and Thank, thank God, Ardex let me spend their money to attend some of these PDA events. And, you know, we, we had a great program, we laid it out, and I believed in it because I believe in the future. You know, if, if we don't take care of the future, like you and I were just talking before the podcast, the future, you know, is everything. So, yeah, it, yeah our industry, if, if, I, if I, I do many times a year prior to COVID, I would speak to vocational education schools and I would tell these young guys and girls, I'd be like, Hey, look, I'm where I am because I was where you were. You know, I went to vocate. I knew that I wanted to be in a vocation that I loved and I believed in. And it just kind of was strange how I morphed from painting an automobile to cleaning an automobile. It, it but I like making things look new. Um, I mean, if, if you go out back here, I, I got a snowblower with ceramic coated. I got a <laughs> lawnmower to ceramic coated. <laughs> no kidding. I, you know, and, and, they don't and, get a they don't get a lick of dirt or grass on them. It all and, just and falls it, off. It's crazy because I mean, I I've been a I've been a vol I'm a third generation volunteer fireman, so I was Very raised. Nice. I was thank you. I was raised in a firehouse where. To keep things clean meant they last longer and work better. So you know. that, that's why my father kind of taught me and, and, and the guys at the firehouse taught me, if you want something to last long, you take care of it. So I, I kind of just like loved everything about it. So when the PDA came along, I'm like, you know what? This is how we can educate our future. You know, if we can talk to these young people and take them and, and teach them, you know, a skill and a trade and, and give them everything that, that we feel they need, then, you know, that's the future. Well, the PDA didn't do so well. But it was a starting point. And that was, into into your point and everything, though, that 
you know, you being involved in Ardex, being involved in the early years and adapting in the early years to something of significance that helped lay out the footprint for the IDA was so huge. And that just goes to show how much Ardex has been involved in the industry for how long and, and, and how they've played key points in some of these things that have helped the foundation for where we're at today. And, 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 and yes, and that's absolutely correct. And then what happened was when the PDA kind of dissolved, if you will, there were other organizations. Uh, some of them, you know, I were skeptical. Some of them were not really um, kosher. Uh, you know, some people were doing some bad things, wrong, wrong things. I would say bad. They were just doing wrong things by creating associations. And when the IDA came along and, and I knew Bud and, and, and Greg and Karen and, and some of the other people in the infantile stages of the IDA, they were like, hey, you got to get involved with this. So I said, look, I'm going to step back. I'm going to look at the whole picture and then I'll decide if we want to get involved with it or not. Because, I mean, I have written training manuals for companies like CarMax. I've written training manuals for many, many dealerships around, around the country. Um, you know, but, but I, don't, I don't, that's not what I do. It's what we do at Ardex. Ardex becomes a true partner with, with a dealer. We, we sell to some of the largest dealership groups in the United States. And it's because of our partnership that we form with these dealers. You know, the owners of these groups, they know us. They, they know that they can trust us. Uh, in the recon facility and the get ready to facility. So I was strong on training and that's what I was looking for with the IDA. You know, I was looking for that focus on training. When, when Keith and I spoke many years ago at a trade show about the IDA, I, I'm like, yo man, I'm from Missouri, you gotta show me, you know? So I, I stepped back and I watched and I attended a few events and, and when 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 the association was i found they were being you know run and overseen by somebody as great as the people that are doing now cheryl and her team mm -hmm. and i still was skeptical you know it but what happened to me and and you can appreciate this um Ardex, you know there was companies that were involved like like you know pns and and uh, uh, you know, Keith was working uh, with Bud and Detail Plus, and yep. you know they they keyed on a whole different market than we did. You know, those guys are like, you know, I, I love Rennie, I love PNS, I love their attitude, I love what they do for our industry, but we were keen on the de dealerships. So you know, they were keen on the detail shops, what we call, and no disrespect to you because you're one of them. A boutique shop. No, so, don't find that disrespectful. That's more of a compliment. Great, great. Because <laughs> I, I, I love you know you guys. God bless you. You know if I if if I knew you in 1981, I'd be you. I wouldn't be me. Because <laughs> I would nothing love more than a high end boutique detail business. But um, I, I don't regret anything I've ever done. Uh, so anyway, people at the IDA, the other members, I, I was getting like that that kind of feeling like. Oh, you're Ardex. You're you're the guys that sell the dealerships, you know. Like, oh, you guys sell dealerships, you know. And and I'd sit there and I'd say, mm, you know, yeah, we only sell several hundred gallons of compound a week, <laughs> you know, because we have such a, a a bigger audience. Yeah. And and so I I I I accepted that, you know. In, in dealerships are are some of the best detailers I've ever seen in my life. Traveling, traveling across the country for Ardex, I've met a lot of detailers, a lot of men and women that are very highly skilled detailers. And a lot of these highly skilled detailers exist in dealership space. You know, they, they go to work every day, like, like, you know, with the mindset that they're going to make something beautiful that day, they're going to take something that looks like crap and make it beautiful. And they have a reward more so than maybe a boutique shop, your reward possibly is what? Another client referral, okay? These guys and girls get to see 
a vehicle that may came in on a trade of $5,000, what they do to it brings the value of that vehicle to let's say $8,000. So the dealer knows that what a good dealer knows what they do in his reconditioning department can increase his profits on the front end of the deal tremendously. Oh yeah. Right. So, oh, yeah. so these detailers are rewarded nicely. Now I'm not saying that, you know, they all do, especially since the last couple of years with the, the economy kind of being funky and everything like that. But I get calls weekly. Hey, Sean, this is, Joe Smuckatelli from ABC Cadillac. Man, I need a detailer. Who do you got? You know, I'm looking for a good skilled detailer. You know, they're not calling me and saying, I'm looking for a good, good skilled car cleaner. You know, you go to some of the largest wholesale operations that we deal with around the country. They're, they're very, very respectable of their detailers. Now, and is that, would you say too, that, that you seem more better detailers now in the wholesale community or is there less because a lot of them are breaking off to do their own thing in their own shop to become their own entity you know it's kind of cyclative um you'll see where what happens justin as you, as you probably well know and i see it as a manufacturer and as a distributor you know especially now with the stimulus checks i'm getting phone calls left and right hey man I, I got a I got a shop vac and a and a and a uh, um, what's that Harbor Freight buffer. I'm I'm a detailer, you know. I, I you know I'm a detailer, and it's like, you know, I no disrespect because you never know where that guy or girl's going to be in ten years or five years. They might right. blow it up, and they might be you, you know. And and I so I don't I treat everybody like, hey, look, let me help you. Equal you know, opportunity. That's, yeah, that's what we're here for, you know. And so the survival of that is probably about 40%, believe it or not, maybe even maybe even 35% of those people make it in the industry, whether they get beat up by the competition, um, you know, don't ever do, you know, we have weather here. So, so we have, you know, five or six months out of the year where it's, it's not nice. So when you have a mobile detailer, they can only operate from, you know, let for, you know, Rob Schufer, he's got it nailed. I mean, he's got it down. He nailed it. He's got, but he's got all three worlds. He's got yeah. dealership, he's got mobile and he's got standalone. Yeah. So, yeah. so, you know, he, but he makes the mobile work and he knows how to make it work uh, through the seasons here in, in the mid, in mid Atlantic. So, you know, but here you get to see, you know, a lot of these people, um, it's tax time. They go out, they buy a buffer and a shop back and they think that they're detailers, you know, and, and you, if they end up, you know, in a, in a dealership and they get treated properly by the management, management of dealership has changed tremendously over the last 15 years, you know, back when, back in the eighties, it was, what have you done for me lately? You know, I mean, you could just, you could have just took, taken a vehicle that was a total turd and polished it. And it's now a sparkling gem. And the dealer just made $4,000 gross profit on the vehicle. What are you going to do for me now, Justin? What's next? You know, what are you going to Back do? Then they were super appreciative of that profit margin too. Well, yes and no is where I'm going. The, 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 the people in the car business back then were rougher on their employees. They were, they were kind of like, um, you know, I'm talking about some of the dinosaurs in the, in the dealerships and the guys that have been there 20, 30 years that just, you know, were pounding it for selling cars. You know, they were moving 30, 40 pieces a month. And, and, you know, the, the back end of the dealership was just, was just there to support the front end. You know, the front end was where all the money was. You know, they were pumping cars, making money, you know, especially on the pre-owned side. So if you had a good deal, if you had a good dealer, owner, principal that respected the fact that his reconditioning department worked hard and, and was making him money, he loved you too, you know, but um, so, so it's kind of, like I said, it kind of transitioned now. The dealership has gone from the front of the house to the back of the house services everything 
you know, I started with CarMax when CarMax was building their first store. Um, I learned about CarMax. Fred Goldman told me about Wall Street going into the car business in 1993. And I said he was, I told him he's crazy. I said, it's too fragmented of an industry. Wall Street will never get a car business. And he said, well, they are. And he threw Wall Street Journal on my desk. And there it was, plain as day, Circuit City is getting in the car business. So I would leave my house at four o'clock in the morning, drive to Richmond, Virginia, which was a four and a half hour ride. Oh, wow. and, and, and I camped on the doorstep of Circuit City to find out who I had to talk to to learn more about CarMax. Because the internet was was very vague back then. You know, we had Google and whatnot, but it was, it was not the same. Yeah. No. So I would go to CarMax or Circuit City a couple times a month until I got the right people to talk to. And when, when I told them my passion on training and my passion on detailing and re, you know, recon, recon, reconditioning of used vehicles, it was a perfect match. And, and we held on to the CarMax account for many, many years. I mean, they would fly us, not, not us fly for them. They would fly us from city to city and, and we would do the training, the setups, we were, you know, consultants on designing the shops. We would, we would spend a week at each new shop. It was great. It was tremendous. And then what happened was Circuit City and, and CarMax came apart. And when it did, um, Circuit City was just kind of being managed by some people that we couldn't do business with. You know, they were just putting too many demands on their suppliers. And they, they, they actually lost a lot of good suppliers uh, because of that and they still it's very struggling to do business with it but eh, it is that's why they're that hey where are they at today right exactly you know <laughs> so so right and and you know the the bottom end of it was that you know we moved on you know we and and but we still have the same mindset with justin if you had had a shop and you wanted to learn more about Ardex products or you wanted your guys hey look can you send somebody here to shadow Make sure the guys are doing the right thing. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, it, it, it's 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 a partnership. You know, and and like every other partnership, it's it's got to be a win win. Yes. You know, and and um, you know, we 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 kept moving in that direction, um, and and it was really cool in the late 1900s. <laughs> the late 1990s i'm sorry yeah 1900s um <laughs> everything was black and white but then it was this big transition <laughs> hey look my wife was in it man i didn't see her from the day after christmas in 1999 until january 2nd 2000 all right she literally <laughs> slept in her office ate in her office and she worked for a, she was in it for a major insurance company in the united states but anyway so we, we, we decided that we love what we're doing so much in the route sales. And at the time, we're, we had 13 trucks here in Philadelphia. Um, and it was, I'm sorry, at the time, we had 10 trucks in Philadelphia. And it was time to, to find some place that didn't snow. You know, because anytime it would snow in the Mid Atlantic or New England, our business slowed down tremendously. Oh, yeah. So we had distributors down south. We had distributors down in, in, in the southern Midwest. Um, but most of our ex distributors at the time were located in the snow belt across the north, you know, from, from New England through the Mid Atlantic out to Chicagoland and, and that area heading south down into New Orleans and, and a little bit in Texas, but all on the East Coast. So we had an opportunity to move into Pompano Beach, Florida in, in 2000. We started putting trucks there. Uh, we have a warehouse there. We have four of our own trucks there. We have a tremendous regional manager there, uh, Albert. Um, oh, yeah. you know, and, and he, he I, I hired Albert because I, I knew Albert from prior to him coming to Ardex. I knew him as a detailer. I knew him as a person. And I knew that I wanted him on my team. You know, and when I introduced him to Fred Goldman, you know, it was just a natural. He 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 did everything that we do in Philadelphia, and he believed in the same. And he hired a team 
the same way. Yeah, he's a great fit for you guys. I've spent time with him. I've gone and spent, you know, a whole day with him here and there. And he's he's a right. solid asset for you guys. And yeah, great. Thank you. Thank you. We, 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 we appreciate him. And then on the West Coast, we had an opportunity in 2002, two, three, to, uh, to put trucks in the Tampa market. We, we took over a previous distributor that was there failing um that that you know and, and i say failing i don't mean failing because they couldn't do it they feel they lost their love of it is what happened they they kind of fell out of love with being a distributor they were very good at, at what they did which was like radios and alarms and crap like that but they they fell all off is what they did so I, I i shouldn't use the term failing but so anyway we went into that market um i i knew estefano from prior to him uh working for Ardex. I knew him from running a dealership operation for a third party concern. Uh, I knew him as a person and I knew him as a detailer. And you know I pursued him, brought him on board. And we are so happy that we also have someone like Estefano. Um, you know, he's he's another asset. He's big on training all the all the beliefs that we have it, he he just took to here in philadelphia we took a route guy that was with us for 28 years in a route truck and knew that i knew that his devotion to training and customer relations and whatnot so we promoted paul copes from a prc which are we don't we don't call our guys route guys or anything like that. We, we designate, they're called professional reconditioning consultants because that's exactly what they are. Most of all, if not all of the people that are PRCs for us in our trucks, all work in the, in, in, in the industry. You know, um, they're, they're, if they weren't actual detailers, they were maybe like assistant service managers or parts managers. But I don't I don't really remember any parts people, but I have a couple service guys, but the bulk of our guys are all detailers and they 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 come handpicked most of them. Uh, when when you know we offer somebody an opportunity to join us, uh, you know they're coming into a family business. We have we have PRCs that have been with us 30 years. 29 years, 28 years, 27, other than a couple of new trucks that we just put in other territories, the least youngest guy with us is 17 years. So wow. people come, yeah, we, well, you know, it, it's again, um, we handpick more or less. So we know, you know, they know what we're, we're looking for. Um, and, and they, they, you know, want to come join us. Um, Paul, and, and we have a trainer here in Philadelphia, uh, just hired named Shane Sawyers. Shane and Paul just yesterday had their skills verified. So nice. they are, Congratulations. Uh, thank you. They're, they, and I'm very proud of them. They, they are CDs with their SV. And I expect probably throughout the summer, Shane needs to get a little bit more under his belt for his RT. But I, I'm certainly confident that Paul will have his his RT by the end of the summer, and Shane within a year, and and they're devoted to the to the IDA, you know. So all this training and everything kind of also spins with the IDA. We we experience the IDA, we try to tell the IDA who we are. And I was feeling like maybe they were having a little trouble comprehending who we were because we weren't the high powered boutique shop, you know, lots of advertising, lots of, you know, whatnot, because, you know, we didn't live in that world. We didn't need to play in that world. And, and so the idea kind of didn't know us. We actually flew Cheryl to Philadelphia for a few days. We had her meet our yep, team. I remember that. Right. We had her meet our team. You know, we took her out into the field, right? We took her out into the field. Yeah. You know, she's used to going to your shop right here. Here I'm taking her to this, this backyard 
recon facility for an auto auction, but she really had a good time because there was a lot of really, the guy had a lot of uh, collectible antique automobiles. So she was in, she was in her glory. But there again, you know, we, Steve Goldman made a commitment to the IDA and I wanted to make sure the IDA was happy with us, you know, so I wanted the IDA to experience everything that we do every day. Um, I, I think, and, and I, I'm, I'm not 100% sure of this, but I, I, I think I was one of the driving forces for the dealership task force committee because I wanted the IDA to look at the dealerships, which every dealership, I think say every, 90% of the dealerships employ detailers. If not yeah. through a third party, they have their own. Right. These are opportunities for these young men and women or, or men and women to join the IDA. Okay. I, I know that, you know, together we're strong, but bigger, stronger, bigger, bigger, stronger, stronger, bigger, bigger, bigger you know, so the, and, and I think that these young men and women that work in dealership atmospheres can benefit from the IDA. And, and I'm sure that um, ASE how many years ago were a couple of guys sitting around saying, man, we got to, we got to form an organization. Yeah. We got to get organized. We got to let people know that, that the person that's working on their car is not just a car cleaner. You know, it, it, I talked to dealer owners, principals about the IDA and, and they're, most of them are like all for it, except for the fact of, of the problem of holding an employee. You know, unfortunately, today, or, or I think forever, I'm not going to say today, uh, an employee's dedication to their business is, is, you know, who's going to offer me more money? Yeah, that's, what, but, that's how a lot of their mindset is. And well, and, and you know, it, it's tough because I get, I get really pissed off at car dealers. I get pissed off at wholesalers because I'll get in fights, with, arguments with them, and I'm saying, you know, John back there in detail, you got a great guy or, 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 or Mary, you got a great girl, you know, and, and I'm telling you right now, man, you need to hang on to that person because there are, I would say five out of every 10 dealers were once used car people. And those are the guys like I'm selling to second and third generation people now, you know, from, from being, 40 years at our day yeah. i'm selling the grandchildren of people that i was selling back in the 80s back in the 80s when i was at 20 years old my customers were 35 year old men and women well you know being a 15 year time span difference i'm now selling to their grandchildren you know and their children and a lot of the dealerships that are owned by the children of the dealers that owned them back in the 80s who I was a nuisance and bug and tried to get their business, the kids worked in the detail shop and they appreciate everything that Ardex does. So we just kind of grew with them over time. And there's dealerships, you know, we service over a thousand dealerships a week, all, wow. all through Ardex, a thousand dealerships a week. And, and it's, it's, it's what we do. So, you know, being that we're that deep, a lot of these people respect what we do. We respect what they do. And, you know, I, I get a phone call, all, you know, a, a, every week, at least once or twice from a dealer, an owner, you know, yo, dude, you got to go fix this. I'm like, what? Well, huh? You know, um, it, it, you know, the dealer, dealer thinks that, you know, I spend a ton of money with you guys. Well, what do you mean you spend a ton of money? You spent $10,000 with me last year. I did not. I write a check to you guys every month. Yeah, but look up in the upper right hand corner of that check, dude. It's a small amount. Yeah, and it all adds up over time, but it's not a significant amount that's going to keep the lights yeah, on. You might be <laughs> right one every month, but it's not a whole lot of money. But you know what, though? That's why we need a thousand dealerships because, yeah. you know, together they gulp, individually they sip, you know, and, and a, a lot of dealerships appreciate what we do because of the way we do it and and they know that they don't spend a lot of money with us but they appreciate it and it's all through training 
you know, tra training our PRCs, training the employees, you know, just, uh, I am, you know, I am so thankful for the IDA. I'm thankful for guys like you, like Bobby Phelps, Rennie, Mike Phelps, you know, all you guys out there that are, that are uh, uh, Keith Duplissy, you guys are so devoted to the industry. I can't thank you guys enough for what, what you guys see for our future, you know, and, and, you know, the, the detail industry has been uh, nothing but, but a great journey for me. Um, I love what I do every day. You know, uh, the, the owners at Ardex have asked me when I, when I think I'm going to retire. And I said, when I put my feet on the floor in the morning and I said, I don't want to do this anymore, maybe. But mm -hmm. I don't think that's going to be for a while because I truly love what I'm doing. And it's, you know, from, you know, great people like, like, like you and, and, and Richard and, and Clint and Julio that put these things out there that just make our industry better, Justin. And I can't thank you enough for doing that. Thank you. And that, you know, that goes on, on everybody's behalf. Anybody who's involved, especially as long as you've been involved, I mean, there's, there's that initial platform, right? And without adding little pieces to that platform to build on, you know, everybody contributes a little differently, some more than others. But the point is that everybody's contributing at some level. And Absolutely. there's so Absolutely. many levels of, of detailing now in this industry, whether it be the wholesale production, boutique style, any of that, it all still contributes to the to the big picture of the detail space in general and the industry of detailing. And I, even though we do it a little differently, everybody has a little bit of a different approach, whether it be one boutique shop to another or boutique shop compared to a wholesale or production style at, you know, at a, um, uh, not a warehouse, what the heck's the word I'm looking for, at, a, uh, at an auction, mm -hmm. whatever it may be. Um, it's still, it still signifies detailing and in, in, in car cleaning at many different levels, but yeah, no, I think that, you know, we all have our contributions that we've made and everybody does it a little differently, but it's building the industry as a whole and, you know, Ardex being there in the beginning yourself, it's all definitely helped. Um, and then, um, I, I love going to the MTE, you know why? Because I meet detailers. Yes. You know, before that venue, and I've been doing that with Kevin since the beginning, we were one of the very first vendors. And, and we used to do the International Car Wash show because that was the only venue we had. I never met, the, I didn't meet detailers. The MTE has given me the opportunity to rub elbows and meet detailers from around the world. The IDA has given me the opportunity to meet detailers from around the world. I mean, People look at my Facebook page. I have 4,300 Facebook friends. I don't have 4,300 friends. <laughs> you know, I, I have a few hundred really good friends. <laughs> I like to say that. But if you look, they are all detailers from around the world that I ask questions. They ask me questions. And, and we interact with because I want to know more. Everything I could possibly know about detailing, I want to know. I am so looking forward to the SDC coming up in June, you know, Daryl and, and Detail X. And I'm, I, I'm really stoked about attending that event because we didn't have our MTE this year due to COVID. So yeah. I'm, looking, I'm looking to see a lot of friends and meet a lot of new friends at, at the S SDC. Um, so, you know, anything I can help the IDA, you, the industry, anybody watching this podcast, Anybody that wants to reach out to me, I'm easily accessible on Facebook. Um, and how do they find you? What's what's your Sean what's Rowan? Like? My name, Sean yep. Rowan. Just just I I don't I don't uh, you know use I use it for personal and and business more personal. Um, but like I said, you can contact me anytime. Any questions you'd have and anything that you need, Justin. You know, I appreciate everything you're doing, man. Well, thank you. And do you have any? Uh, any last words of encouragement or any anything that you could tell everybody that, that would help them in regards to being a detailer or a distributor, whatever it may be, something that, that you could give that would help? Follow your dreams. Follow you your go. dreams. It's simple. I don't care what you're doing. I don't care if you're digging ditches or if you're the CEO at, 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 at you know, uh, Amazon. Follow your dreams, man. You know? Right. If you want it, go get it. It's out there. 
Um, I learned at a, at a young age that, that, you know, working gives you money, money gives you things. So I have literally, I can honestly tell you, I have not been unemployed for more than a week in 50 years. Um, it, it's just follow your dreams, man. Reach for the stars. Sure. Sweet and simple. Well, Sean, thank you. I appreciate you having you on again. This is Reflection Artists uh, Live, number 25. So hopefully as we start to gain more of these uh, episodes, we'll have you on at a later date as well, maybe into the, the triple digits by then so we could get some heavy momentum going with this podcast. And uh, thank you for everything in your background, you know, where you started and everything you've done with Artex and the industry. And of course, what Artex has done for the industry and some insight on that. And that's, that's huge because, you know, Artex is a major player in our industry and people need to know that. So thank you. Thank you for your time today. And uh, we definitely appreciate it. Well, thank you and your team again. And I look forward to the next week's podcast. Awesome. Well, thanks everybody for watching at home and um, we'll go ahead and finalize everything now. Sean, thank you. And thanks everybody at home. You guys okay. take care. Have a great week. Be well, stay healthy. You as well. Take care.